I've traveled to over 30 countries and the one that keeps coming up is Uzbekistan. 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 In fact, with just a simple YouTube search, you'll find a bunch of videos all calling this place the same thing, the world's cheapest country. And this, well, this piqued my curiosity and I had to find out more. So I researched this place. Uzbekistan was once at the heart of the ancient Silk Road trade route that connected China with the Middle East and Rome, which was something I never knew. And I didn't realize just how rich the history of this place actually was. And I wanted to know how it went from being that to being considered the cheapest place in the world. And I knew that simply researching it by itself wouldn't answer this question for me. So I decided to pack up and I booked a trip. I mean, there has to be more to Uzbekistan, right? That is pretty affordable. I'm pretty impressed. I really wanted to find out if looking past the price tags, searching for real connections and digging beneath the surface reveals something that has been completely overlooked in this country. The people. <laughs> Today is not my day. Oh god, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Our journey starts in Abu Dhabi, one of the most expensive cities in the world. $17 for a coffee in Abu Dhabi. I better be going to the cheapest country in the world. And yes, the irony is not lost on me that I'm flying a budget airline from the sixth richest country on earth into one that is widely known as the cheapest. After boarding our plane, it's time to experience somewhere that I've heard so much about, but I'm determined to have my own opinion of. And four hours later, we arrived at our destination, Uzbekistan. 20 minute drive from here is, a taxi is two US dollars. 20 minute drive. Wow. Here I am in Uzbekistan. Apparently the cheapest country in the world. Jok, Jok, Jok. It's okay, we put in here. Back mat. Not actually sure what to think yet. Didn't have the best experience in the airport, so I'm not sure. Okay, wow, even so far I can see it's so much different to like Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and stuff like that where we just came from. A short taxi ride into the city saw us arrive at our guest house in the middle of the ancient city of Samarkand. We took a moment to settle in before venturing outside to get a taste of this incredible Silk Road city. So today we don't really have that much planned. We're going to head to the Registan um, and get a coffee. That's the first thing for me and kind of go from there. This is a tea town and for a coffee lover like me, I was lucky enough to find a little oasis in the desert that actually served coffee from a real coffee machine. The problem, or so I thought, was how to buy coffee in this country where many international cards aren't accepted and many ATMs don't disperse cash. That, that, uh, Okay, so the exciting thing about being in the world's cheapest country is that WISE is sponsoring this video, which is awesome because WISE is actually a product I've used before they even reached out to sponsor me. Um, so that's really cool. It's one of the main ways I access my money while I travel or pay for things while we travel. And I know that a lot of you always ask me um, how I do that and how I pay for things when I go. So now, since we had basically no idea or no plan coming here, we have hired a guide. He's gonna show us a couple of the like important things here in summer camp. I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> Still. So for being the world's cheapest country, it is definitely not the world's cheapest coffee. <laughs> it cost me $4.55 Australian dollars, um, which is actually on the higher side. Although it might be one of the cheaper ones in front of the city's biggest, oldest, most beautiful monument. We're sitting right in front of it. So there is that to take into consideration. But so far, I'm not sure. But I sat down and I took in the majesty of the Registan before meeting up with our friend and guide Assad, who took us inside the incredible structure to see it up close and personal. We're going up to the first floor to see how like the people live. And it's not often Michael hits his head on anything because <laughs> he's so short. Careful, there's one here too. You okay? <laughs> see all of the like really intricate tiles and all the blue that you see from the outside everywhere seeing the blue is just beautiful we've been coming from countries that have a lot of gold or use a lot of gold accents in like their buildings and their architecture but here is the first place i've seen blue like this and it's just everywhere and i think he was telling us it took about 13 years or something to build and it's so old i can't even comprehend ugh, how old this is the Registan really is stunning. Walking through this site really allowed me to be immersed with the local culture and really take in just how significant this place really is. We've made our way to the bazaar and I think we're going to go inside, which I think will get a little bit crazier, but it is very, very hot. This indoor outdoor bazaar 
is really cool. There's so many things, nuts, apricots. Nougat. Oh, nougat, nougat. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that is nice. Uh, bread. Local bread, the heavy of one bread can be three kilograms. Three kilograms. Okay. How, how many people will eat it? Whoa, <laughs> that's heavy. <laughs> and do you have like one for your whole family? You buy one and then yeah, you yeah. eat it with dinner? Yeah, we usually take two and eat one or two days. How much would one of these cost? And should it be non Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. So three Australian dollars but two American dollars. Ten twenty five. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> We're walking through this bazaar and there is so many different stations. We're no like stranger to a market or a bazaar when we travel, but this is unlike any of I've ever seen before. More of a like Central Asia, Silk Road, I don't know, Middle East, I don't know. This is so different. Even the things you get here are different. Big breads that cost two American dollars and three Australian. I feel like that's gone up in price. I feel like um, I used to watch or I have watched videos from people being here in the cheapest country and I think it was a lot cheaper back then. So far, I'm not sure it's as cheap as I expected, to be honest with you. I don't know, maybe we're going to the tourist places. Who knows? So we were thoroughly enjoying the market and wanted to buy some stuff when we realized that we had no cash and we needed to get so some. So we all have to get money out, right? And a global multi-currency card, likewise, is a perfect sponsor for my channel. I'm so excited. You get, what, a million some out to be a millionaire for the first time in my life? Which, which is, is about $100. Less, dollars. less than 100 US. Less than 100 Australian. So go withdrawal, other amount. Oh, it's money. out of money. We actually just tried to get more money, more SOM out, and none of the ATMs worked. They were empty. Yeah, it just honestly, it's been one of the hardest countries for me to travel in, if I'm being completely honest with you. At this point of the day, we hit a snag with Assad. I always like to connect with local guides and spend my money with them if I feel like we have an actual connection. I had a good feeling about Assad, who ensured me we would see some sights and then head to his family's home to experience true Uzbek culture. However, it became quickly apparent that this wasn't true and I'd been told what I wanted to hear just to get this out. Very disappointed, just as I was about to pack it in, go home and consider not even uploading this video, we met Sultana. Good, how are you? Me too, thank you. Welcome Good. to Samarkand. Thank you. My Good. name is Sultana. Sultana? We ended up hitting it off with Sultana. This was the connection I was seeking. What I'd been searching for is someone so passionate about the things they love. And of course, as friends do, Sultana invited us to her home for a meal. Oh, wow. Please. <laughs> Take my shoes off? No, no, no. Yeah, okay. This is my grandmother. Salam alaikum. Salam. All right, we're heading. Ah, salam. Hello. Salam, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Salam alaikum. This is my mom. Your mom. Yes, this is my mom. Oh, she looks like your sister. <laughs> yes, yes. We brought this for you to have here. Ah. <laughs> This is why I travel, travel to make connections. And fate brought me to an incredible one in Sultana and her family. This is your like national dish. Yes, our Samarkand national dish. Samarkand. My uh, grandfather, his name is Golib. He is already 65. 65, yes. you're so young. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, especially in Samarkand, uh, uh, young uh, people, for example, men and uh, women, yeah. they marry in, when the girls 18 or 19, they Young. already can, uh, they can marry. But about the men, they can marry uh, after 22. Also, oh, there's an age at which you can can then marry someone. Yes. Oh, wow. So we can, they can marry to each other in a young age. Young so that's age. why they are uh, young. He was an uh, engineer. Yes, yes but I'm about to ask what he did for a job for a, he, yeah, a living. Transport engineer. Uh, yes, buses, cars. Oh, something. cool. Yes. <laughs> And what about my mom and grandmother? Yeah. Grandmother, they are both of them. They are doctors of wow. microbiology. <laughs> what about me? I'm just yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I'm just a student. I'm a tour guide. So this is like your traditional meals. This is what you would have as a family yes, here in Uzbekistan. Yes. We we needn't to go to the market yeah. for uh, bringing something because, for example, my father, my grandfather also he have. A, He's another garden. In his yeah. garden, he have a cucumber, potatoes. Uh, tomatoes, so it's all like all home, that. all your stuff from home. Yes. And your cow from next door. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why everything is nature here. Yeah. 
here. Is there anything they want people to know about Uzbekistan as well? Yes, yes. Yeah. No, uh, nowadays, you know, after two days, I mean, two days, uh, two years before, uh, it was a show, shows, you know, Shanghai's organization, some mm -hmm. meet in Samarkand. Just for some context as to what she's talking about when she says things weren't great here two years ago, Uzbekistan was under a state of emergency due to political unrest. Uzbekistan has imposed a regional state of emergency as the country is currently reeling under deadly mass unrest. 18 people were killed and at least 243 were wounded during last week's unrest in the autonomous province. Mm -hmm. Nowadays we have more tourists than two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is different than what I expected as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say that it is also, we can call it like a love story or something like this, but mm -hmm. my grandmother and grandfather, they make all of this house by them or themselves. <gasps> you made it? Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. The whole house? The yeah. whole house. They lived yeah. together for like 40 years and I was like, how'd you do it? <laughs> We can save our family, save our love, save, save our friendship, I can save our rela uh, relationship because of the patience, I can say. Yeah. So uh, the patience, it is actually like an angel in our hearts. Uh, I have a patient, you have a patient. I don't I have, have a patient. <laughs> well, we have a patient. That's a good tip, I should listen. <laughs> what about my father? Yeah. It is, yeah, you can say that it's not uh, normal in Uzbekistan, something like okay. this, but it's, it is, nowadays it is normal in Uzbekistan too. You know, it can be, divorce sometimes can mm -hmm. be better for each of the people, mm -hmm. you know, and for the parents and for the children sometimes. For example, for me it was good. Yes. It, it was okay. So my father, he have nowadays uh, his own family. My parents are divorced too, uh, so I don't have my dad either. And but grandpa. and I grew up with my grandpa. Yes, I did. Yes, he's actually he's my uh, like he's my uh, like second father. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like me. We just realized that both of our mums were like, oh, you know, after the one child and the divorce, we were like, it's okay to be on alone. That's the same thing that happened to me. We have the same story. Sitting around this random table in Uzbekistan in a blended culture family of both Tajik and Uzbek descent, it amazed me how quickly we were all comfortable discussing some of our most personal stories. Hearing about Sultana's life made me realize just how similar our stories actually are. Oh, the boys are playing yeah. a game. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen a game like this. What's this? I can, follow, I can remember. But he, okay. he looks serious. Yeah. He's going to win. Yeah, it's like a chest, I can see. Yeah, okay. And so thank you uh, so nice much lunch. for coming to my house. Thank too. you. I really Rahmat, thank you so much. <laughs> nice to meet you. How do you say nice to meet you? Thank you for maybe a longer stay next time, not yeah, just quick yeah, one yeah, day, so two fun. days. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> All right, I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a super long day. We have to get up really early. We have a train to catch to Tashkent and we're taking you with us. So we're gonna see you very early in the morning. Good night. Morning, we are up early to head to the train station and catch a train from here in Samarkand to Tashkent. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> An early ride to the train station saw us ready to catch something you may not expect in Uzbekistan. High speed, high quality rail. Buying the tickets was easy. Okay, so while I'm sitting here at the train station, I thought I'd just let you know that I booked these tickets and I book all of my tickets when I travel with a digital card. And this is literally how I do it. I go onto the websites and I never give my physical card details, ever. Let me stress, ever. <laughs> I don't want them skimmed. I don't want to have to replace my card. I don't want any of that. One of the things I love about Wise is that they offer you a digital card option. So what you can do is pay with that digital card. I set up anything I pay online with my digital card, any train tickets. And to be fair, this train's website 
literally told me that they would have problems. It's pretty much their slogan. Yeah. If you use my link in the description, I'm um, gonna follow the prompts. If you join Wise, I think it's one of the best travel cards. I'm not gonna lie to you, we've had so many issues in Uzbekistan. I'm not actually sure how I think about it. I've never come to a place and been like, I don't think I love it. I don't know. I don't know if I love it right now. I put in my card details to book the place we just stayed in and I thought they just took the money because I put in my card details and he's just chased us down to the train station and forced us to get cash out to pay because apparently they didn't charge us. It's like, well, that's not my fault. It's just these whole little things. Yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit later on, maybe on the train or when we get to, to Tashkent. Cause right now we're really short on time. But I think the um, train guard just tried to sell Michael a different ticket. I'm just over it. Like I have, I'm holding all this stuff. I was holding a, a water here, so I couldn't even like vlog. I'm here to make a video and I'm just I'm not in the mood today. So like I said, I have a, I mean, I've been up since 5.30 um, and I'm probably gonna be asleep in 30 seconds on this seat. It goes back so long. Um, three, three and a half hours, all the way to Tashkent. I'm a bit tired. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Today is not my day. <laughs> so talking about things being affordable and the cheapest country, this trip for the two of us was 180 thousand Uzbek som, which is the total of 22 Australian dollars, which converts to $14.30 US. $14, that's together, $7 US per person on this three hour train trip from basically one end of the country, I think, to the other. Oh, not really. Between two major cities. That is pretty affordable. I'm pretty impressed. I'm not a morning person, but even in this state, I was excited about this train. Super simple, super fast, modern. Honestly, after a conflicting start to this trip with Assad and Sultana, it was nice to sit back in our seat, talk to friendly locals and enjoy the scenery. We have arrived in Tashkent. Now let's get, oh, we haven't booked a hotel. Okay, hold on. We really came here with no plan. With us coming here with basically no plan, things got really stressful very quickly. But within the stress and the chaos, we found ourselves a taxi to the hostel. And you can see we were absolutely exhausted from waking up so early. The hostel seemed fine, but that was until we stepped foot into the room where I sat on the bed and well... Oh no, that's horrible. Is it bad? You see, a few years ago, I had broken my back, so I have to be extremely careful about the surfaces I sleep on, and this hostel bed would just not be okay for me. We tried getting a refund, we tried cancelling, and we tried coming up with some sort of solution. That was honestly the worst bed I've ever sat on in my life, and that that hotel, that hostel, sorry, was still 130 bucks. So I'm not paying 130 bucks and not being able to sleep. Anyway, he was fine. He let us cancel the booking. Now we're gonna head to a Hilton. Michael is a like a member. Um, so we get like discounts and, and stuff there. So we're gonna head there. Look, sleeping on that bed would have been bad news for my back. So we hopped in another taxi and this time we took it to a hotel. Upon arrival, it was clear that this was a good decision. A we made it. It's not a king. Okay, jokes. <laughs> Just to add to all of that, uh, they said they upgraded us, but they actually downgraded us because the room was smaller and a queen and we booked a premium with a king, which is this. I digress. I will tell you my thoughts soon, but honestly, for now, I need to rest and calm down. <laughs> The comfortable bed was what I needed. Before I knew it, I had woken up the next day. I also wanna say that I am not just a diva. The reason I can't sleep on just any bed is because as I said, I broke my back in the past. And I'm just so grateful that we were able to, despite it being super stressful, get a new hotel room because- When I broke my back all those years ago, I actually had to relearn to walk. It was not a in and out thing. I was in the hospital relearning to walk for like six months. And when I sat on that bed, there was just absolutely no way I could have survived sleeping on that. To give you reference, I've slept on things before that I knew in my heart felt wrong and I couldn't walk for a month after. And I can't, I can't afford that when we travel, obviously. We're in Tashkent now. We're gonna go out and see if- See what Tashkent has to offer at this point. <laughs> at least Tashkent, I thought we'll have a look through. Oh, at least a bazaar. Um, and just have a look at a little bit of the prices if we can find them, if they're listed, just to see how cheap it actually is here. To give you some reference, couldn't film it, but the subway that we used to get here was like, a dollar? How much was the subway, Michael? 10 cents a ride. Oh, 10 cents. Okay, my bad. Just coming out of summer camp, coming out of the tourist trap, <laughs> I would say. 
it's it's just awesome i'm treated more like a human here than i was there and it yeah it's i knew this is what i would find i knew i would find something a little bit deeper here that's me what five pieces oh yeah. rakaman rakaman thank, thank you so much Shafran. what's this Shafran. oh saffron saffron iran Oh, it smells, yeah. smells nice. My experience in Tashkent is way better than Samarkand. I love Central Asia and I was waiting for it here in Uzbekistan and I, and I didn't get it when I landed and when I was in Samarkand. Only here, <laughs> so far. Despite the amazing hospitality we had in Samarkand, we just still didn't have the best experience outside of that. We felt like we were in a tourist trap. But here in Tashkent, especially in this market, we felt really differently. People were much nicer, they were offering us things for free, and they took a genuine interest in sharing their culture with me. This is the feeling that I search for when I travel. Okay, I have to admit, I did not have the best experience arriving here. At the airport when we landed, we had um, a lady from the Beeline SIM card try and basically scam us and tell us that our phone needs to be registered when it did it. Just left a bad sort of start. It's just been not the easiest time to travel and I'm just honest about that. I, I go to many, many different countries and say I love it. And when I love it, I'll say I love it. And when I'm having a hard time, I'll say I'm having a hard time. That's me. Okay. <laughs> you will be in the video, see? You can say hi. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. All right, nice to meet you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he wanted to take me to the mountain. Yeah. And I was like, I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was beautiful. It's funny when you think about it. Sultana and I are so different. She is so focused on her education and her study, while me, well, let's just say I prefer doing to listening. We have different cultures and different beliefs and different understandings of the world, different languages, different looks and different trajectories in life. But our stories are the same. No fathers, raised alone by strong women who did their best to play both parental roles, to give us the best chances to achieve the things we wanted in life, to equip us with the skills to not only succeed, but overall to be happy. And in this moment around the table with people who are more similar to me than I realized, I felt truly happy. Sure, Uzbekistan has Samarkand and its great, beautiful and historical buildings, and you absolutely must see them in your lifetime. But I have been all over the world, and there are so many beautiful tourist towns that have lost their human touch. It feels like Uzbekistan might be shifting in that direction, one where tourism dollars mean more than sharing our cultures and stories. But that doesn't mean all hope is lost. It just means that you need to be brave enough to make the connections beyond the tourist traps, to have the guts to say hello to people you don't know and to form a connection with them. And today, with Sultana and her family, I'm reminded once more that travel is better when you're brave enough to just say hello. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you?